Let's all take a moment to bond over something we all do. Age. We're all aging. What did you get for your birthday? I got older. Ha ha. Funny joke. Realistically, we can't actually stop the aging process. And in some ways, that's good. Mentally, we want to just keep growing more capable, expanding our mind, our understanding, and our creativity. Physically, though, aging is not thought of as positively. Past a certain age, the body kind of just gets worse and doesn't really stop. It's less capable, harder to maintain, and more susceptible to injury. And eventually, that physical deterioration starts to affect the mental side as well. Fortunately, we've stumbled upon a few ways to combat this aging process, and they're not that complicated. Proper exercise, good sleep, reduction of stress, something to get you out of bed in the morning, and hey, look at that, nutrition. Bet you didn't see that one coming. Today we've got a nutrient whose role is pretty directly tied to the combating of bodily deterioration. Not that most of them don't do that, but with this one in particular, I think you'll know what I mean. But we're not getting any younger here, so without further delay, let's get back into the true nutrients. Selenium is probably the least known of the dietary minerals, so let's shed some light on it. Selenium is an essential nutrient, meaning it is needed for optimal bodily function, but the body does not produce it on its own, thus it must be consumed. And yes, it is a mineral, a non-metal chemical element that is mainly found originally in soil and it works its way up the food chain until we find it in the foods that we eat. The element was discovered in 1817 by Swedish chemist Jans Jacob Berzelius, but selenium was not recognized as an essential nutrient until 1957. Selenium is considered a trace mineral, meaning that it's needed in much smaller quantities than certain others. The average body contains roughly 13 to 30 milligrams total. About 30 to 45 percent of it is stored in skeletal muscle, but a good amount is found in the thyroid gland as well. Selenium homeostasis is maintained mainly through urinary excretion, and it is a generally very bioavailable nutrient. It's absorbed at a 30 percent to an astonishingly high 90% rate from certain animal products. Thus, in the majority of the world, selenium deficiency is pretty rare and not a concern. Because of this, selenium is not required to be on a standard food label unless it has been added to the product. And now I get to talk about the functions of a nutrient that pretty much no one knows about. Now, for those of you who watched my first meat tier list, you probably heard at least 30 times that selenium is used as an antioxidant. Apparently, I really wanted to drive that point home. But now, I am here to tell you that, yes, that is a big part of what it does. That's not all it does, but it is where I want to start today. For those of you who don't know, an antioxidant is a substance that prevents cell damage caused by these things called free radicals. These are unstable molecules created during metabolism. Free radicals are not exclusively harmful, but in excess can lead to oxidative stress, which can damage cells and DNA in particular, causing genetic alterations so that way when a cell replicates, it has an imperfection. Infection. Oxidative damage and stress can lead to several chronic diseases like heart disease, stroke, Alzheimer's, and cancer, as well as your body just feeling the effects of aging faster than it has to. So, in a way, selenium is responsible for maintaining the health of many bodily systems. Selenium is also a necessary part of a specific class of proteins called selenoproteins. These play a crucial role in the production of DNA, your genetic blueprint. And as mentioned earlier, the thyroid contains the highest amount of selenium per gram of any organ. That's because these proteins are also needed for the creation of many thyroid hormones, having a direct impact on your metabolism and growth and development. Selenium is also needed for muscular homeostasis and proper reproduction. For as relatively obscure as selenium is, it has a role in several of the most essential bodily functions. And the reason it's not talked about as much, I'm assuming, comes down to its quantity and accessibility. Selenium has one of the absolute lowest daily consumption requirements of all micronutrients. Its recommended daily intake being only 55 micrograms for both men and women. That recommendation rises to 60 micrograms when pregnant and 70 micrograms for breastfeeding. For reference, 1 milligram is equal to 1,000 micrograms. To put things into perspective, the weight of a single grain of table salt is also about 60 micrograms. It's hard to fathom how little of this mineral you actually need 
need in your day-to-day -day life, especially since, as I said earlier, it has a very high absorption rate, up to 90%. The average daily consumption of selenium in the States is between 100 to 150 micrograms, which is well above the RDA. Selenium deficiency is practically non-existent there due to popular foods containing high amounts of it, but it is much more common in certain parts of the world, affecting an estimated half a billion to one billion people worldwide. A large part of that is not having easier access to selenium-dense foods or because the soil is lower in its selenium content. The risk of selenium deficiency also increases if you are undergoing dialysis, have HIV, or a digestive disorder such as Crohn's disease. Symptoms of selenium deficiency include fatigue, infertility, thyroid issues, muscle weakness, immune weakness, and it could contribute to diseases like Kashan disease and Cashin Beck disease. Now, on the other end, the upper limit for selenium is 400 micrograms. Too much selenium is incredibly rare, but it can cause issues if persistent. If you have concerns regarding any of this, selenium levels can be measured with a blood or urine test. And last but not least, let's talk about food sources of selenium. I've been repeating that it's a fairly accessible nutrient, though that is definitely much more true of one type of food than the other, that being animal foods. Animal sources, including pretty much all types of meat and dairy, are consistently selenium dense. The most selenium rich foods are, as usual, seafood with shellfish like oysters, mussels, cuttlefish, and octopus leading the fray, followed somewhat closely by some fish like tuna, tilapia, and sardines, and mackerel. But due to selenium being protein-bound, literally almost any meat will solidly contribute to your selenium intake, it's just that land meats are not as absurdly dense. But if you want to talk about absurdly dense, take a look at plant foods real quick, and you will no doubt notice an outlier. Brazil nuts are the most selenium-dense food on the planet by a good margin due to the unique soil conditions where they are grown. A single Brazil nut is enough to fill your daily needs. In fact, realistically, eating too many Brazil nuts is one of the few ways to overconsume selenium. But rest assured for people on more plant-based diets, there are other good options. These are mainly in the form of grains like wheat, barley, and oats, and seeds like chia, sunflower, and sesame seeds. A few other notable sources include soy, portobello mushrooms, and mustard seed, and by extension, mustard. But also, many other plant foods contain selenium, just not enough to be worth talking about. And with that, I believe I have talked about every mineral that I at least plan on talking about for now. So far, I am quite pleased with the fact that this series seems to have brought a good amount of awareness to the concept of micronutrients. Nutrition isn't all just calories, and often these can dictate whether a food can be considered nutritious and worth it or not. And hopefully I've done a good job of explaining how your body would suffer without them. But there is a whole other side of micronutrition that I guess I'm going to be covering next. So, if you enjoyed this video, or at the very least learned a little something, I encourage you to subscribe as I have plenty more of these on the way. Go ahead and let me know down in the comments what other nutrients you think deserve an entire in-depth breakdown video like this. And remember that all I ask is that you do your own research and advocate for your body. You only get the one.